getting into a university abroad is a long and tedious process. Now that you've gotten in and are scheduled to fly out, here is my guide to all of the things that you need to pack. Firstly, let's talk about the bag. Now a lot of airlines have a lot of regulations about the bag. And some airline regulation bag may not fit the regulations of other airline. So the best thing to do is to just get bags that fit the majority of the airline. For check-in baggage, Qatar Airlines states that the combined height plus the width plus the depth of the bags must be under 158 centimeters. So a lot of luggage which you find online is not under these regulations. So make sure to find a bag which fits. I've also given a few links in the description down below of bags that fit this criteria. Now the cabin baggage. Now the easiest thing to do here is to just get a backpack. It's really easy to handle as it fits compactly on your back and it's quite easy to lift and maneuver around as well. The Qatar cabin baggage dimensions are 50 into 37 into 25 in centimeters and 20 into 15 into 10 in inches. So your bag must fit under these dimensions as well. Let's go on to clothing. Now bear in mind, you won't be doing laundry every day at university. You may do it once a week or sometimes once in two weeks. So you need enough clothes to last you the whole time. Let's start off with t-shirts. It's best to go with six to 10 t-shirts, which are a combination of both collared and round neck t-shirts. Now you could both buy them in your own country or go to the States and buy them there as well. But when you travel, make sure to have at least five t-shirts with you as you need it for your initial period of stay. Now let's go to shirts. Now it depends on how often you wear shirts. Now since I wear them quite often, I am taking three formal shirts and four semi-formal or casual shirts. I have put a link to both the t-shirts as well as shirts via Amazon and Unlimited in the description down below. Now the pants. Now take around four to eight pair of casual and semi-formal pants. Now these could be jeans, chinos or classics. And also take three to four formal pants as well for formal occasions. Now it's good to take a few ties if you have them. If you don't have them, that's no problem at all as you can go near the university and buy them at any store. When it comes to socks, it's best to be on the safe side. Take 10 to 15 pairs of socks, which are both thick and thin. Depending on the location of your university, it may get really, really cold. Also uh, take around 10 pairs of undergarments as you'll be doing laundry only once in a week or maybe once in two weeks. So you'll need them. Now you could also take shorts and track pants to wear around your dorm and you could add more track pants and remove a few casual pants if you want to do so. It is also recommended to take one traditional dress or suit as there will be some holidays and events on campus where you would want to wear something traditional. Now let's talk about shoes. When it comes to shoes, there are a few categories. Firstly, a pair of shoes to travel with. Now this should be something easy to slip on and slip off and something comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Next, you need a pair of bathroom slippers or crocs, which you can use while going to the dorm bathrooms or for short walks around the dorms. Now, when it comes to the all-weather shoes and any other formal shoes or sneakers, I suggest buying them near your dorm or maybe via Amazon while you're in the States as it's cheaper there and the quality is much better as well. Now, let's talk about sweaters and woolens. Now, depending on when you're leaving, just take a light jacket or a sweater for the flight. Now, buy all the major winter jackets in the States as they'll be of much better quality and they will function much better than jackets bought in your home country. Also, depending on the place you're going to, you will need an umbrella. It's much easier to get a heavy duty umbrella in the States rather than buying it and taking it on your flight. Now, bear in mind, for a place like Texas, you will need far less woolens and jackets when compared to a place like Massachusetts as it tends to be a lot colder in the northeast than in the south. Now let's talk about bedding. Do not carry all of the bedding on your flight as it takes up a lot of space and is super heavy. The best thing to do is to figure out what your university's policy is on deliveries. If they accept deliveries from Amazon, you could just order a complete bedding pack from Amazon. There are also some universities which have partnered up with organizations like for example, UMass Amherst takes deliveries from OCM, which is our campus market, 
up to 30 days before the scheduled movement date. I will leave a link for both the Amazon bedding packs as well as for the OCM website in the description down below. Now let's talk about the electronics. I'm not going to go in detail and I'm not going to be talking about the laptop or the phones because that's for a different video. But now I'll be talking about a hard disk which you would have to take. It's best to take around 512 GB or a 1 TB hard disk for heavy files and any files you'd have to carry around campus or any movies or any other heavy documents you would have to take from home. Now a good pair of headphones with a mic is very very important as some classes may be online and many meetings may be online as well. Now one thing which isn't talked about a lot which is very very important is a home country pin to US pin converters. Now many of our adapters, the laptop chargers and phone chargers are not configured to the US pins so you would need a pin converter to transfer the current. Now a few things which you can go to the states and buy are a small table clock, maybe a wrist watch and also a few pen drives. These are somewhat the same cost both in your own home country as well as in the states so it doesn't matter where you buy them. You also need a scientific calculator for most math classes. Now it's simplest to just go and buy it via Amazon once you're at campus simply because it's somewhat cheaper when you buy it in the states and the quality is quite good there as well. Now let's talk about toiletries and personal hygiene items. Now this is totally up to you. Now if you like the brands in your own home country then you could totally buy it from here and take it to the states. But if you're not really concerned about all of that you could just buy it in the states as well as they are not that much more expensive. Also about stationery, it's much easier to just buy them once you're at university. Also just keep in mind that when you buy stuff, buy it only when you actually need it. There's no point in buying a printer and getting new cartridges every 6 months when you could just print documents at a library or at one of the university buildings near you. Now in this video I'm not going to be talking about the utensils and food items but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to know what to take and other stuff to buy in the states as well. I will also put a list of required documents in the description down below. Now let's also talk about a few miscellaneous things that you'll need while traveling. Firstly a good leather wallet. Now this is very important simply because you'll be carrying a lot of cash plus also the forex card or any other international cards. Now the second and even more important thing is a wallet for your passport. Now you could keep a little bit of cash inside this as well as a card as well as your passport plus your ticket. Now you could also carry a monkey cap, a muffler or a scarf and also remember to take 7 or 8 handkerchiefs, a few in your cabin baggage as well as the rest in your chicken baggage. Also now talking about taking money. Now it's simplest to take around $1000 in cash and the rest in international cards or use a forex card. Now once you are at the states, just open a bank account and transfer the money. It's ideal to use an actual US bank account while you are studying at your university as you would not have the international transfer fee that most international bank accounts which you open in your home country will have. So that's basically the end of the video. If you found it informative, please like the video and share it with all your friends. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell down below. I'll see you in my next video.